I think the photobionic therapy is not a new technology. It's uh, kind of back to the 90s when it started to be used in skin cancer. And actually, it's used a photosensitizer that uh, is activated by light and cause some kind of reaction. And this reaction can will lead to a disruption of the cell and lead to the, the, the necrosis. And so it's different. It's a concept that uh, the, the, the current PDT that you use for melanoma and other cancers, they, they use uh, photosensitizers that go and enter the, the cell and cause a cytotoxic effect inside the cell. So it has been used in tested for urologic malignancies for a time ago, even for prostate and others. But the matter is that you can't not define uh, your borders very well. You you end up uh, damage other tissues, neighbor tissues, and for prostate, for instance, like the neural bundle and can lead to a erectile dysfunction and whatever. So this new technology was was called and it's called vascular photodynamic therapy. It's a different concept. So instead of entering to the cell, the photosensitizers that is derived from a bacterial chlorophyll that's called the porphin or the DST11, WST11, sorry, and it remains on this, the circulation in the blood and it acts on the vasculature. So what happens when, when this sensitizer is hit by light and for a specific weight length, like it's 750T nanometers weight length, and this causes a reaction with the oxygen radicals and will lead for, and this reaction will lead to a vascular disruption. And we have thrombos, thrombosis, and that tissue, the vasculature are going to be damaged in that tissue, specifically that tissue are going to die. So this is the main difference. And here you, you've been studying this for a long time, it's more than 10 years, that's so you have preclinical trials, uh, models, and you, this is approved for, for prostate in Europe, for low-grade prostate cancer. So it's not approved, it was not approved by FDA because they thought that for low-grade prostate cancer, active surveillance is the best treatment, and there are some fears of over-treatment if it was approved. So they know that it works, and the prostate will have a trial going on. Probably they're going to present the prostate trial this year in ASCO. Uh, I, I think I'm going to be in, at, at ASCO. And if I, phase 2B for intermediate risk prostate cancer, that's another thing. So prostate was the first target, and then we evolved to esophagus, pancreas, upper tract, this one, and now lung cancer. So this has been evolving for us quite a time, but this, uh, now you, you have the first results from the, the, the clinical trials, aside from the first prostate, low risk prostate. So that's, it's a technology that's involved in this partnership with uh, the Weizmann Institute in Israel, the Morris Lowe and Catherine in New York, and the University of Oxford in the UK. So we, I foresee a good, a good results in the future. I think it's a nice technology. It's, it's based on the org organ sparing. That's what you want. You, you want to, to have good oncological outcomes, but sparing the, the organs, sparing the kidney and the prostate and 